Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a slightly different episode. I hope this is something that people can just put on in the background while they're doing other work or, you know, outfitting a boat or something and just listen to. This is going to be an interview between myself and a lovely chap called Simon, who has some great opinions about all sorts of things kayaking related. Uh, we are just going to ramble off. Um, quick note. The audio is definitely quite uh, one-sided. Simon's is a lot louder than my own in this interview. Please forgive me that. I really hope that it's still worth watching, worth listening to, uh, and that you can still pick up what's going on. Um, I tried to alter it as best as I could when editing, but uh, there's only so much I could do. Hopefully it's still of value to people. This is a bit of a test for me, and if this is something that people enjoy, then I would hope to do some more of them. So let me know if you really enjoy this. Without further ado, let's get in to the interview. Today, I have the pleasure of welcoming Simon onto the channel. We're gonna do a little interview, Q&A, chat. Uh, I, I originally had the idea of calling this Riverside Rambles and you know, had the really optimistic idea that this would end up being filmed on some picturesque riverbank somewhere with a nice little stream burbling in the background and you know a couple of deck chairs and some beers or something um we're in the slightly less glamorous uh situation of talking across across the airwaves um but yes welcome simon hello i'm glad to be here it's a pleasure to be here Good. well we're yeah, very glad yeah. to have you on um whereabouts in the world are you simon and what's your paddling background just to bring people kind of up to speed Okay, so I'm in this uh, whitewater mecca known as Wolverhampton in the West Midlands. <laughs> and oh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah it's, we've got so much white water here. It's just incredible. Um, and I've been paddling since uh, I came to paddling pretty late in life. So I had to teach myself to swim in order to begin paddling in okay. the first place. Um, so I'm not a natural water person at sure. all. I really had to work to be able to to go boating but it basically came to a point in my life where i thought back to those television programs on the, the bbc for those in other countries you might not know but in, in in the uk we used to have a program called paddles up which was a kind of slalom based thing it was quite twee but it was it was great and i as a young kid i used to really love watching it and i was always jealous of people being able to paddle their whitewater boats so um I got to near my mid thirties and I decided if I don't start to learn to kayak now and get over my fears of the water, I'm never going to do it. So I just embarked on a thing to try and get myself water confident. And then I began Amazing. kayaking. So, wow. and now here That's I am. Phenomenal. Uh, so you say, you know, Wolverhampton, not a, not a whitewater mecca in itself. Where, where's your, where's your go-to? Okay, so we have we have a we have some small rapids um, on the River Seven, which I can go to on the weekday, um, and you know that that's great for like hot, warm summer evening sort of practice. But yeah. it's it's about an hour and a half for me to get to the D in Wales okay. um, and yeah, that yeah. sort of area, so it's not not too bad for me to to get to places like that. And the same for HBP, you know, Home Pier Points uh, and yeah. such like. So so those are my regular kind of spots for day-to-day day-to-day paddling and uh, mucking around and cool. it's been great because on the d recently that the wave has been at an absolutely awesome height since last october due to all this rain yes. so uh, yeah, cool. it's, it's been been really good so yeah yeah i think we've for those that you know are not uk based watchers listeners uh we have had a phenomenal winter in terms of water this year i think uh, it hasn't pretty much hasn't stopped raining uh, <laughs> since about mid October, yeah. um, and we're now in early April. Uh, I think maybe the sun is finally beginning to to think about showing its face, but it has been a very long, grey, oh, yeah. wet, very windy winter, um, and that has been a positive thing. <laughs> it's it's been it's been great. But strangely, as as a, as a kayaker, I should be hoping for rain all the time, but I'm starting to look forward to those really nice warm summer oh, likewise, evenings. And I think I think uh, you don't realise how how much it affects your sanity not having any blue sky above you for yeah. 
months at a time until yeah. you've been in it for five, for five months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Dear. But no, it's been it's been phenomenal, hasn't it? Um, uh, very cool. Uh, there's something very exciting behind you that I feel like we can't we can't pass up talking about. So. Uh, I was gonna. I was gonna ask you the question: What's the newest boat in your quiver? And hope that that might lead on to this. But apparently, you've already set me up here. So, uh, what are we looking at here? <laughs> okay, what, what we're looking at here is a a Hobson Kayaks Rockstar Five, um, and yeah, it's beautiful. It's not as colourful as it was supposed to be. I made a bit of a. I, I I messed up the order on this thing called Boardlands, which is a printed fiberglass thing which allows full colour. Right, I ordered okay. the wrong one. Um, oh no! But it's actually come out looking probably a lot more badass than it was was originally going I mean, to look. It looks really cool. If you look very closely at the back, at the tail, you can see the patterns. Oh right! Oh, so it's patterned as well as carbon. yeah, yeah. So it's so oh, it's not. Wow. It looks like it's just carbon, but you actually yeah. look closely, and there's this really cool effect where you get the you got the carbon mixed with this this abstract pattern. Oh, amazing! Hello. Oh, very cool. Oh well, maybe so, maybe if you it, send me a couple of pictures, I can uh, insert. Yeah, it, it, it shows it shows up better in shows up better in sunshine, but uh, yeah, cool. it's um, um. <laughs> which, as we said, we've had precious little of. Uh, okay, <laughs> so why a carbon boat? Okay, so my it's it it, it it is a uh, an indulgence. I I will admit that right off the bat, it, it yeah. is an, an indulgence. It's all right. It's an indulgence. Um, I can forgive. I've done the same. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I'm I'm not new to composite boats. I've mm. I've had a couple of composite slalom boats in, in carbon. I have a carbon surf boat as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I like the feel of paddling a composite boat. Yes. So yeah. Um, you know, there are certain traits to them that that are very very different to, to paddling the plastic boats. Yeah. Um, but. You know, I don't. I'm not a top level freestyler by any stretch of the imagination. Not at all. I spend most of my time on flat water, and the simple fact is, a carbon boat is much lighter to throw around. You can keep going for much longer yeah. in a carbon boat. The difference in weight between that and the plastic one is just huge. Yeah, it's just massive. The difference of therefore carrying it from and to the water. Yes, I yeah fully sympathise yeah. with that. Yeah, and. Previously, uh, my my Gigi, my plastic Gigi, um, the XO one, I I I fitted the carbon and the foam, the, the carbon outfitting the, and the foam seat in it, sure, uh, yeah, yeah. and that makes a big difference to that. You know, it makes it yeah. so much lighter. And then previous, I had seemed to have this history of making the, my, my playboat as light as possible. Previous to that, I had a a Jitsu, which I ripped out all of that heavy Dagarogo outfitting. And I replaced it all with my own. I I, I made my own uh, outfitting. I put a Gigi seat in it, and it's kind of influenced by. Um, and I'm going to absolutely butcher a name because I can't remember. When I was out in Uganda, um, I um, Adrian Levkinak was there, and she had a jitsu, and completely made a t like the entire reproduced the entire dagger outfitting in carbon Whoa. in a, in her jitsu and i was okay. I, I just took one look at her thought i want that i yeah. couldn't have that because i couldn't do that so i just ended up with this heath robinson sort of thing with my foam with my foam that i'd used to shape her on and all the rest amazing. of it but it did, it did the trick absolutely amazing wow yeah very cool very very cool so but yeah sorry what for for the average paddler then would you say carbon is worth it no <laughs> um <laughs> no i mean it's it, it's it, yeah it, they are they're, they're pricey um and you know unless you have a, a a specific a specific reason you know i know this is an indulgence but i do a lot of flat water and i do feel the difference in how light a boat is yeah. Um, I'm doing that, and if I'm trying to re um, practice moves repeatedly, you know, it, it does make a difference. But yes. for, for most normal people, it's it, it's not. If you you know, if you were getting into surf kayaking, 
yeah, I could highly recommend the carbon boat. You can buy a used one quite easily. Um, same with same for slalom. I wouldn't want to use a plastic slalom boat yeah. um, at, at all. Um, so you know, in those instances where you've got a specific reason, then yeah, composites um, is is worth it. But if you're you know dabbling in freestyle or you're you know you're you're paddling, particularly if you're paddling rivers for your play boating, I I wouldn't you know unless you've got lots of water, <laughs> I, I wouldn't. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't recommend yeah. um we do not live carbon. on the ottawa in the uk do we <laughs> so, no yeah. no um, but by the same token you know uh, you know the, the people that i come across that they found out that i've got this boat they're like just use it just just get out on the river yeah. you know you, you see ej just chuck his boats across the car park you know and you know they're tougher than you think i mean yes. i won't be doing that with that but um yeah. but they are tougher than you think they are oh no they're very tough for sure like you know my carbon gigi i would take that out on high water days on on the loop um you know some of the waves on the loop are phenomenal in a in a yeah. play boat so um on high water days i would take that out on there and you know no fear if it did hit a rock i've also surfed it at Lynmouth a few times and landed yeah. pretty heavily on some rocks and it was fine um yeah yeah i wouldn't want to do it repeatedly but uh yes However, as you say, so I've literally just <laughs> sold my Gigi. I've just yeah. moved away from the carbon boat in favor of, I've downsized my, my fleet <laughs> down from three boats to two um, and kind of combined uh, my two play boats into one full slice plastic. I've gone to a Nova, Dagger Nova. Okay. Um, and I took the Nova out in some fair mid-sized surf sort of four to five feet of surf uh the other day that's pretty chunky um, yep. and i found that i could i could throw every move that i could throw in the gigi in a nova uh and nice. arguably i'd say my air screws were better um <laughs> that's interesting uh and but that, that might just be me rose tinting it because i haven't actually paddled the gigi in surf for at least four months and so you know the memory's hazy the memory's hazy um, maybe, maybe maybe carbon nova oh oh don't don't tempt me frodo uh, <laughs> um no i just just intrigued i think because i fully agree at the time when i bought my carbon boat i think i had lots of the same reasons uh, that you you've just shared um doing a lot of flat water uh but also not feeling you know i have never been a high level competitive freestyle paddler um i started producing tutorial videos about it through lockdown because it kept me sane uh, yeah. and i happened to have access to a lot of local flat water and i was out on it all the time yeah. and so i suppose that lent a certain degree of expertise um yeah. but a high level freestyle paddler i am not so um i sim sympathize with the reasoning and I, I think i'd probably agree actually anyone who has a has a valid reason and is like you know what this money's just burning a hole in my pocket i'm gonna you know i i think uh i, I think a carbon boat is is probably a sensible choice and it, especially if you're somewhere in the uk where you've got access to good surf um, yeah but you're not yeah. into getting a surf boat and you just want to progress your your big volume paddling and your play boating yeah. there's no better environment for that than surf and a carbon boat will definitely teach you things um yeah uh, some of them might not be lessons you want to learn uh, <laughs> like how big is too big of a wave to to try and get out of um but uh yeah i mean that could happen in any boat couldn't it so yeah yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean i th i do I, I have to say i do think you, you you're doing yourself down in terms of um your your freestyle ability i've seen you um freestyling and um yeah uh, it's it's pretty impressive i would say but um um but yeah you know you, you're right the, the, the surf is absolutely um a fantastic place for anyone to go i just have to put that in there as well um, <laughs> yeah of course I, I know a lot of people get turned off by it they stick with the rivers mm. and if an opportunity to get to go out and the surf comes along they're like mm, yeah i don't know if it's my thing but um, I would recommend anyone go out, even if you're not surfing, even if it's just going out through Absolutely. the through yeah. the through the breaks. Well, you nothing, know, it's, nothing builds nothing builds a stronger booth. Yeah, um, 
<laughs> and nothing builds your resilience for big water better, I think, for big volume than than going out in some chunky, probably probably slightly dumpy, messy surf. Teaches you, uh, it teaches you to hold on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I am, I'm, I, you know, I'm one of these people. I'm freaked out by big volume stuff. Mm. So I think it's probably true um, of a lot of UK paddlers. We we don't have access to it, so it, it makes yeah. sense that it kind of scares. You know, we have high water. Yeah, but it's high water on low volume. Yes, rivers and creeks. We yeah. don't have those quarter mile wide humongous sections that you get in north america and canada and, yeah um yeah so yes fully sympathize <laughs> yeah yeah and it's uh, i'd like to get out in the surf um, a lot more um yeah. and i used to spend a lot of time down in pembrokeshire which was which was great yes. but i haven't i haven't for a bit so um getting out there again would be would be great yes uh, so looking forward to to it this year yeah yeah nice hmm this okay this leads slightly on to my to uh, the, the topic of conversation the reason this uh interview is happening at all is that simon sent me a, a lengthy voice note uh, off the back of my nova um first impressions video uh where he was commenting on uh, the kind of current i don't know culture inside kayaking i suppose the current sort of um cultural moment if you can call it that of uh the popularity of the half slice that isn't a half slice is that is that the right way of saying it maybe um kind of yeah or a half slice that is not being used as a half yeah. slice um, yeah. because because half slices are the thing to have uh so um i suppose the question is wh what do you mean <laughs> Yeah, so I think you know there is an element of, of, of fashion, I think, about about mm -hmm. some of these boats. And 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 before I say anything much at all, I, I I want to kind of establish that I'm not dissing on any of the manufacturers or the developments because I think that considering the size of white water as an industry is tiny compared with mountain biking or surfing. Yes. We are actually incredibly lucky to have companies like Piranha and Dagger and and whoever are, whoever else developing and pushing new designs and, yes. and trying new things out. So we are incredibly lucky to have that. So I'm not putting that down. <laughs> you know, it's a, and, and such but, a and such a broad spectrum of companies as well. Yeah, you know, you yeah. think for such a small sport, actually, there are what maybe a dozen. Yeah relatively yeah. large you know large yeah. or relatively large companies yeah. that produce at least one or more designs of different yeah. kinds like yeah. that is that is quite a quite a spectrum yeah um, yeah granted there are definite overlaps between different companies but they do generally speaking bring something they have a niche don't they otherwise absolutely they wouldn't, otherwise yeah. they wouldn't still be on the market um yeah so yeah no you're absolutely right yeah, yeah. no absolutely <coughs> we're not aiming to not aiming to bash on people Every no. every company has had its good designs, and every company, I'm sure, would admit uh, they've had their bad designs. Yeah, um, for and, sure. You know, maybe we can talk about some of those elements uh, without yeah. being disparaging. You very rightly in your in your voice note to me, you said you want to bring some sanity to this <laughs> conversation, this this uh, this topic. Um, yeah, and I would hope we could bring a little bit of grace as well, and just yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, be be sensitive and be. <laughs> be gentle yeah. with people but also be like well this is this is a fact <laughs> yeah yeah anyway sorry carry on i, I mean i think i think a lot of the, the, the sort of the origination of, of where i was coming from is you know i i know um i know people who will chop and change their boats a lot mm. and and when uh, a, a company launches a brand new boat and they've done all the marketing for it suddenly you see like a, a load of them on the river <laughs> like you get and the hype purchase yeah you get the hype purchase and i i i do wonder sometimes well i don't wonder i know sometimes that there are people out there who perhaps don't know what they really want from a boat mm. you know so um i i know people who will who will uh, paddle a boat for a very short while and this is you know we were talking about this before we started recording about you know getting to know getting to know the boats you know even if there might be 
aspects of it that you you don't like. Yes. Um, and I think there is this kind of um, tendency maybe to there's a bit of Kool Aid stuff going on. I think with the marketing, you know, you see you you, you see guys like uh, like Dane Jackson and and Brent Orton and everything, and they're, they're they're doing amazing work and making that boat look like oh my god, that's going to transform my paddling. Yeah. I'm just going to be so much better. My booths are just going to work. I'm going to flying off this. And, and then, then you the reality that those people could make a potato look good. Exactly. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get the boat, and it's like uh, you can't. Kind of, maybe, maybe you get in it uh, for a demo, and it's like, oh, this feels great. But mm. it's kind of a bit of a mixture there between what you've seen and what you know. You, you're in yes. that boat for the first yeah. time, and um, and how much of that is just a psychosomatic oh i want to like this and yeah they're, to, they're, and i'm yeah. gonna tell my brain that i'm liking this and therefore i'm liking it um yeah and, yeah and, and you might also genuinely like it yeah there There's is some that in there. Yeah. yeah i mean there are some boats i do think that are, are are genuinely good i mean i have to admit i when i when i demoed the firecracker when it first came out I had to I had to engage my sensible brain because I did very nearly go straight back into the shop from where I got the demo and go <laughs> take my money, <laughs> and but it wouldn't have been the right boat for me. Mm. It wouldn't yeah. it wouldn't have been the right boat for me. So I held off. I pulled myself back from from, That's from very doing that. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the lovely blue one as well. Oh, that was oh. very nice. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I think maybe there's like people feel pressure i don't know but um i i do think there's an element of of, of not getting the right boat for the right person yeah. so again i think i i spoke about how you would have half slice boats and then the person who paddles it never ever uses that that tail ever it yeah. never gets used yes um and you know i don't know whether there's an element of well, if i wanted to I could start using it. It's there yeah. if I want it. I, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. be interested to know what you think. Well, and it, it's interesting, isn't it? That I think you're right. There, there is a general, general maybe unfair. There are a significant number of people who will buy a half slice boat, but they won't engage in any level of three dimensional play. Um, I think you mentioned in your in your voice note you mentioned about the idea of someone you know going to a local weir and the weir the weir is shallow so all you can do is flat spin and you've got yourself a full slice because you know that's a play boat so you can play boat in it but actually you could just as well be in a creek boat and you would learn all yep. the same things and do all the same tricks yep. um, and possibly do them more successfully and stably because you haven't accidentally got water piling up on top of you at, at certain points if you make a mistake uh, yeah. so critically maybe um who knows uh, but i think you're right there is there is that kind of proportion of purchasers let's say users boat users who uh for a whole host of different reasons might not be engaging with the full functionality of that boat i mean you could probably argue that for all of us like yeah. anyone who isn't <laughs> bren orton for the sake of argument um probably isn't engaging fully with the functionality of their kayak because reality check most of us don't paddle every day of the year exactly you know reality reality is that majority of uk paddlers are weekend warriors yeah you know we're getting out maybe twice a week yeah. if if we're lucky in the winter yeah um yeah. and then through the summer if you're fortunate you live near a white water center and you're getting out during the week weeknights maybe who knows uh if you're not you're paddling on the flat or in the surf or or whatever you can yeah. get um, yeah but you're certainly not getting on the river very frequently so the reality yeah. is majority of people are maybe putting in 20 to 30 days on the river in a in a year yeah yeah and yeah. therefore the the possibility of engaging fully with a design is just not there so yeah. people don't have the the time they don't have the the ability in that sense um yeah. fitness might also be a factor so they might not have the capability the capacity 
but then there's also the question of the trends driving people's willingness to engage yeah. with that as well yeah um, because another reality check trying to engage with a boat takes time yes. and it takes effort yeah yeah and so i think yes there's probably that element of all of those factors combining and i would hazard to say that the the time element is the most crucial one um, yeah yeah which mean that you have this great proportion of people who simply don't sit with a boat or sit in a boat long enough don't invest the time rightly or wrong you know for whatever reason um aren't able to invest the time to learn that boat yeah and that leads to one of two things it leads to either stagnation or frustration and probably both yeah um and therefore people see a new design the new trend comes and they're like great i'll jump on the hype train because that's going to make me a better paddler yeah um rather than the uncomfortable difficult no i'm going to stick with this boat and i'm going to persevere with it and i'm going to allow it to teach me and make me better yeah yeah um, and now yes not all boats will do that some boats are literal potatoes and they won't teach you anything um but i think pretty much you could say for most modern half slice designs if you sit with it for long enough and you invest the time and you make the effort um you know you practice dropping an edge and see what happens uh enough yeah. times it's going to teach you things yeah um, and it's going to teach you positive things to be yeah. clear um yes but that willingness and that ability is is a commodity and it's a short supply commodity um yeah i suppose would be be my thought the other thing that kind of comes to my mind as well is that not all half slices are created equal no and especially in the the current trajectory of boat design that maybe we're seeing um is that you have out and out half slices and you have half slices that actually practically have so much volume in the tail that maybe you can do a pivot turn in them if you're skilled yeah. but actually they're basically a river running slash creek boat yeah. yeah that just happens to have a bit of a squished tail yes um, you know reactor is the case in point yeah. i would say yes yeah. this, this kind of strange hybrid which um doesn't uh, i I'll, i will wait until i get my hands on one hopefully maybe uh but it doesn't look like it's going to be a play boat in no. any kind in, uh, in any no. kind of way you know you're going to have to find a really big seam to get that thing vertical yeah. um left well, not even vertical you're going to have to find something pretty chunky to even get it to you know to do a dip turn yeah so yeah what do you what do you think of that <coughs> well what's, what's the point <laughs> <laughs> okay so so just rewind just a little bit so you know Sorry, i was going to say no no that's fine <laughs> um you know i could turn my half slice argument on it on its head a bit with with say a creek boat so mm -hmm. somebody buys a great big creek boat but they're not running you know great big huge like waterfalls and and, and steep creeks and so it does literally come down to the right boat for the right person so yeah. you know clubs will pressure a newcomer to move towards a certain type of boat and you, so yeah, which is why you spoke about you know, clubs full of macnos and things like that yeah uh, yeah yeah <laughs> or you know and sometimes you'll get people who are pressurized into getting say a low volume um slicey boat because it will teach them stuff but that person might not necessarily be have that confidence to you know be, be able to sort of deal with that um yeah, totally. that side of yeah, things yeah, no, I, I so know it, i've been guilty of doing that to people like, no, oh, I mean, I, 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 I learned in an axiom, so everyone should learn in a half slice. Stupid argument. Yeah. I, there's, there's, there are good things from it, but I, I, yes, sorry, I digress. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm guilty as charged. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I will say that, you know, if you have a confident beginner who paddles a low volume slicey boat or a play boat or whatever from the off a lot, they do progress They'll a lot progress faster. Quickly. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
but it's, yeah. not, it's um, not the solution for all people is what you're saying I suppose no it? no that that's the thing it depends entirely on on the person and that's where you know peer pressure and all the rest of it from clubs comes it come well not just clubs but just paddling friends yes um, because yeah. not not everyone's in a club um so you know we have boats as you say like the the reactor um coming out and and i did kind of predict because because Corin Addison did a, a a creek boat of a similar concept a long while ago, long before oh, this yeah. started. Okay. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what it was called, but it was just designed so you could do stern dip turns, or just at least just about not even <laughs> fu- yeah just, yeah. I don't think it's even about getting it fully submerged. I think it's just about create, maybe creating that 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 pivot point. Yes. Without you know, it's, uh, and you've, almost, you've almost got that like. Um... Like the the Ninja is a classic, uh, yeah, brilliant des- example of that design, isn't it? The Zet Ninja, yeah, Where and the horny, pota- horny, horny potato, horny potato, the horny potato. You've got that kind of like wedge just behind the hips that you that it will sit back into and pivot on. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Go on. Yeah, yeah. And you know, this is obviously you know it's designed for maneuverability, and and this is what they're, they're selling it on. Um, and well, all the manufacturers who make this type of boat are selling selling them on, mm. and. If you can use it, it's great. But I do wonder, you know, how many people will buy it and will never, <laughs> never use that ability yeah, totally. at, yeah. at, at all. Um, and, and you know, I have seen it referred to as a quarter slice, which is, you know, I, I can't remember who it is that, that that I saw that coined that term. Yeah, was, I mean, we shouldn't overthink the technology because actually the only no. one that really makes any sense is half slice and everything else is kind of nonsense. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of like it, yeah, it's it's. Kind I think of, full slice really should be double slice if we're calling tip, half slice a half slice. You know. Anyway, teardrop t- uh, <laughs> t- 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 teardropped tear creaker. Ooh, very Does that nice. work? <laughs> yeah, I like that teardrop creaker. I think that should take off. Um, uh, I mean, I think it's going to be. You know, it, it's great to see a, a kind of experimentation in design for a creek boat for sure, because for so long they have remained either. You know, one time they were getting bigger and bigger in volume, and then they were getting longer and longer. But the actual overall kind of shape wasn't really changing. You know, we're getting more rocker and all, but not the actual concept. The general concept was remaining quite similar. Static. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so it is good to see that 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 is taking taking place. So, mm. You know, the next generation of paddlers. You know, you get the youngsters who have the confidence, and they they're probably going to make more use of this kind of kind of stuff than 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 a lot of the yeah (laughs) yeah yeah um but as i say it's it's about getting that right right boat for the right the right person and and Mm. uh, you know fashion does come into it because i i've so so one of the boats that i've always recommended for uh beginners who can only afford one boat Mm. i need an affordable kayak that is you know, it can do some really great stuff. It's yeah. really high performance. I've always recommended um, a used Piranha Z1. A fantastic design. Yes, it's absolutely yeah. it's one of Piranha's best designs uh, yeah. that they've that they've ever done. Um, but I think in pe- in a lot of people's minds, it gets labelled as that club boat. You sure. know, yeah, 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 a bit like the RPM. So it's kind of uncool. Yeah, but oh, I, I would... the RPM will never not be cool. Well, no, no, it wouldn't. But but you know, it's, it, it, I, I think yeah, I, I think, I I think it said one's kind of sometimes seen in the same realm as that. What are the, the, those those uh, club helmets? You know the, oh, that yeah. you get that you get that you get given. Um, nice. But yeah. you know, I I defy <clears throat> defy anyone to you know if if anyone thinks that the Z one is uncool or you know or a bit of a club boat, uh, you know club club style boat for just beginners or anything. Um, they need to get in a Z one. <laughs> They need to either get in it or just or just watch Chris Easterbrook in one because yes. he, he, he you know oh, yeah true yeah you know um, so you know and, and so that's that fashion aspect it's like yeah, oh totally. you know yeah. I'm I'm not going to have that boat because it's 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 not you know. yeah but then you also said earlier sometimes people don't know what they want or need mm. so what advice would you give or what what criteria would you say people need to have in their heads when they are hunting for a boat what what will help people to know what they want or need because if they're just following trends then they can end up in this kind of realm of stagnation and frustration and 
what do I do? Or yeah. I'm just going to grab the next boat that comes along. So, how, you know, how can we how can we bring some sanity to that? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, your, your own paddling, everyone's own paddling is always going to be a constantly evolving thing. So the boat that is right for you today isn't going to be the boat that's right for you tomorrow. Yes. Um, so I, I think it's about identifying what you really love about kayaking now. What, what is the thing that you are enjoying most about your your boating? You know, have you, question. If, yeah. if you're, if you're, if you're, if you've just started and, and you're watching some freestyle guys throwing down and you'll go, wow, I want to do that. Mm. Well, then maybe, maybe, maybe some kind of play machine is going to be what you, what you want. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and if you like bimbling down the river, if you love the scenery, you know, maybe class two is what you just love class two that well then you need a boat that's going to going to suit that that environment you know you yeah. you know it's not going over all the time you know i think people forget that i know i know a lot of people don't class uh, um grade two class two as actual white water but it's still it's still a it's still that subset of of you know moving water white watery stuff and not everyone wants to be doing really hard rivers yeah totally. it's, you know totally. so yeah. Um, and some people, you know, some people will never, never even paddle the upper terrain. They'll, they'll be, you know, forever on the lower or, yeah. you know, other uh, similar rivers. And there is nothing wrong with that whatsoever. No, absolutely. <laughs> if yeah. you enjoy it, it's that's the main thing, you know. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And also, if people are saying that grade two is not uh, not real white water, then they need to spend more time on grade two. I'll tell you what, if you, a if lot you of... say grade two isn't white water, then you're not worthy of being on grade four. Uh, I, I'll tell you what. A, a lot of I, I, even experienced white, white, white water kayakers. I mean, and I'm I'm definitely not. You know, I'm I'm just a typical weekend warrior. Like I'm I'm just you know take the occasional swim. You know, all the rest of it. So I, I'm not kind of, my friend. <laughs> so I'm not. I, it sounds like I'm being right, kind of really egotistical when I say this. But what I would say, but I used to sort of you know dabble in the, in the style not competitively but i used to love mm. going to the practice sessions and and, and even experienced white water boaters if you consider yourself an experienced white water boater get in any car it doesn't matter whether it's a plastic boat or a slalom boat and do a even a flat water slalom session or a slight moving water slalom session yeah. with a good gate set up yeah and do it against the clock and see how well you do. And it will be really hard. Yes. Yeah, really yeah. hard. Yeah. Especially just, if you're- just getting people to make attainments in grade two. You know? oh, the, the, yeah, like, the attainments, staggered gates yeah. are really hard yes. like, to, 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 to do. Yeah. Um, and it, it, just that you're effectively making grade five moves on, on you know, very easy white water. Yeah, and absolutely. I always consider that I was, you know, I've never been, you know, I've never been a great white water kayaker by any sense of the imagination, but I was always at my best when I was going to the slalom sessions in, uh, you know, the slalom boat that I had, going river running in my creek boat and mucking around in my play boat. Yeah. When I was doing all three of those, I was just so much more confident in my ability to make moves and try stuff out and, and, and all the rest of it and yeah. so i think mixing and matching in that way and trying something like that is really really worthwhile yes totally totally yeah cross-disciplinary the more you do it informs everything else yeah totally, yeah totally couldn't agree more yeah. absolutely yeah i love that advice of think about what you're enjoying now um even if that will change in a year or two yeah. years time Yes, yeah. that's, that's spot on. Allow yourself to progress and evolve, but give yourself the best chance by thinking, <coughs> okay, well, what's what's the thing that I'm focusing on now? What boat yeah. will help me achieve that? I think that's yeah. that's a really great bit of advice. Yeah. Um, on that, we talked a little bit about trends and I suppose the reputation of boats and brands and and how that comes about through the the hype train. Um, do you, do, you, do you think uh, we might all be better off if we just switched off our our feeds <laughs> and just listen to our bodies 
while we were actually paddling for a bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, is that too strong? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's it's it's. Well, I guess I guess it's up to the individual, isn't it? I mean, I. Yeah. I mean, I I I deem scroll like the best of them, you know. But uh, it's and but 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 how do you keep an industry alive if there's no kind of you know communication? I mean, yeah, totally. Um, yeah. You know, we could all be, be you know, it'd be it would be easy to just you know. We could take it, take a leaf out of Daz Clarkson's book and just paddle a topo for like the rest of our, <laughs> yeah. rest of our lives. But, um, <laughs> um, but you know, we the, the industry still needs to keep moving in some way. Otherwise, there's never going to be any kind of advancements um, and, and stuff. But I think perhaps we need to pay a little less attention. You know, just you know, we see the stuff and then go, okay, what does my what does my rational brain think about this? <laughs> Yeah, you know, rather than I see it, and um, that must be me in in the next two days. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, it's 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 kind of like everything everything in moderation, I suppose. Yeah, I think that's probably good advice too. <laughs> With me in the corner being the ascetic, being like, "No, cut it all off." <laughs> I know. Don't well, miss, the, don't, there's, don't me, watch there's my me videos, doing this. Not doing things. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> oh man, incredible, incredible. Uh, but um, but yeah, I mean, just go, just just one other thing you know, with the, with the, with the, the changing of the boat. You know, if, if when you when you find you know, we talk about making the most of a of a, of a boat and finding its secrets and mm. uh, really spending time with it. I mean, I recently changed from my from a party Rexy to my to a Ripper two, yeah, and. The reason I did that was because I love the, you know, I, I don't dislike the party vaccine at all. I, you know, I actually really liked it as a boat. The problem is it had a totally different hull to a playboat. I'm paddling a playboat most of the time. So when I get in the river boat, I always find, found myself, yeah, yeah. I always found myself having to adapt to it. Yes. Um, there was another another big reason why, and this is a practical reason, and that is I had a bit of a wet moment in Norway last year, and uh, the, the the guys who rescued my boat commented that it was really awkward to get oh, the boat yeah, across the, the river. The are a really awkward place yeah. on the party Rexy, aren't they? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So really that far was up the, up the tail. Yeah. 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 So that was that was one of my other reasons for. Um, for changing changing the boat, I, mean, that is um, I just wanted something I could get into, yeah. and yeah, because you know be, have no adaptation period, and and you know obviously have better safety aspect, better safety aspect with the, the handle positioning. And yeah. I tried all the different boats. I I tried the Zion Slalom. I tried the the Goat, which you um, just just looked at, and yeah. um, a couple of others, and the Ripper. Was the one that kind of clicked with me. Yeah. You know, the Zion Salem, I loved it. It was so fast, but I, it felt like my, it had that kind of narrow aspect to my, similar to the way my Ripper One was. I had a Ripper One mm. small when I was at the top end of its weight. And the Zion Salem, I kept over edging it. And it's because I'm, it's because I don't want that adaption period. I could get used to that, that edging and the, yeah. the subtlety of edging in that, that boat. But again, it would mean I'd have to adapt to it every time I was in it. Yes. Whereas the Ripper Two, it's just there. It, it has edges I'm familiar with. And yeah, yeah, totally. Just, just, just one thing on that. Like you were talking about those diff, diff, different boats, and and another thing that I've I've come across when I was in my party Rexy, I used to get people um, coming up to me in an eddy, and I've had a few people do this, and they've come up to me in an eddy while I'm sat in it, and they said, I don't, I don't, I don't like the party Rexy. I really didn't. I really hated it. I thought I, I didn't. I don't think it was a good boat. You know, if 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 you if feel you that way, somebody, keep it to yourself. <laughs> keep, keep it to yourself, yeah, because you know that person in that eddy that you're talking to, that boat might be their pride and joy. It yeah. might be the only boat they can afford, and they're having yeah. a great day on the river. Totally. And then having somebody yeah. come along and say, "Oh, I didn't get on with that boat," Not my fact, uh, yeah, yeah. it just totally ruins their day. Just yes. don't do it. Just yeah. don't. Totally, yeah. That is that's very good advice. <laughs> It's a, yeah. I was a bit of a random piece of, but yeah. No, no, that is. I think that's a really helpful piece of advice just thrown in there. Thank you. Yeah, I think I'm probably guilty of doing that a lot. <laughs> so it's good to hear. Um, 
Yeah, no, it's interesting. I've had a lot of people, you know, a lot of people make suggestions. I, I guess I asked for them, so that's fair enough. <laughs> but a lot of people made suggestions of, uh, of a lot of different boats. And yeah. I think realistically, probably, I could have tried any of them at some point and been like, wow, this boat's great. Um, yeah. And been taken. Um, and I think, you know, I've just, I've ended up with the goat because Yuri's very kindly uh, <laughs> sent me that one um, as a kind of stopgap. Um, yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm sitting with it. Um, and I think I'm going to take my own advice with it. Because to me, it's it's falling more into that kind of fat tailed half slice yeah. realm. Um, yeah. It definitely isn't as playful as the other boats that I have been familiar with using, certainly not with the Ripple One. Um, but I, I like a challenge. Uh, and I do, I really, ugh, Wacker Outfitting is just so good. Like, molded in thigh grips are one of probably the best design choices, I think, of any modern boat. And, and those Wacker ones specifically, the way that they just cuff and you can you can just drive the boat with your legs is just fantastic. Um, yeah, I, so I, I think I, I'll, I, I'll sit with it for now um, until, some, I, until someone literally forces me into uh, a Ripper 2 that's the correct size for me and then maybe I'll have my mind blown. Yeah, <laughs> I have to say, I mean, I love most of the Wacker boats, um, but the, the goat didn't really suit how i kind of am <laughs> so it, yeah, it, it, yeah. It, uh, but i do i do love the outfit i i used to be a big fan of the because i used to have one of uh, a ballistic uh, boat and i used mm. to love well, I've, I've had a couple of ballistic boats but yeah i love the way that you could that that pally case um slot that you can just yes. put us oh that's <laughs> great as well yeah the fact you can get a throw line and a water bottle in next to each other yeah genius it, it's it's <laughs> it's 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 fantastic and like you know I, i've no idea why it's never been kind of copied in any way. Yeah, so. yeah. No, it's a gr oh, great bit of design, I think. Yeah. But yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, so two, you've got two boats. Yeah. No. So this is what I was thinking about this earlier on. I, I, I still think that three boats is the sweet spot. I, see, I, I would agree with you uh, as long as for me, that third boat is a long boat. <laughs> okay. Um, well, it's tricky. I think living where I live now, uh, I would I would be hard pressed to to choose surf, surf, surf boat. to choose surf between boat. surf boat or long boat. Yeah, no, exactly surf, surf, I think it is surf boat. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I just the idea of getting a long boat out on the limb is still just so so tempting to me. Um, I think I yeah I, I'd still very much like to do that at some point. I'm hoping that one day it will happen. Um, yeah, no. So I I got a chance to have a proper look at a vanguard the dagger vanguard when i was out in america last year and if they made that in the uk i would i would be giving them my money straight away um i think it just looks like the perfect long boat um you know i loved the green boat i had one for, i used one in america for three months training for the green race uh, and doing the green race and then i came home and i immediately bought a green boat um and I love that boat and I'm like partially gutted that I sold it at the time I felt like it was the right decision um, that and my RPM both went together silly choice uh, <laughs> but yeah the Vanguard I think just they've hit that sweet spot of like modern boat design and taking the lessons learned from the green boat and just shoving them together um, okay. it, yeah it looks phenomenal um, and in a way, like, I, you know, the 12R, I think, is good. But I think the fact that the Vanguard seems to be catered more to a slightly sort of medium to smaller size paddler. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, that would be, be the one for me if, I, if, they, if they've ever brought them over to the UK. But so, I don't, so, think, so here's I don't the, think it's going to happen. <laughs> uh, so, so, here, so here's another question, though. So if, if someone, uh, we're talking about like a three boat quiver. Mm. So is it is it better so we're talking about like paddle development kayak uh, skill development so is it better to have um a variation of a different type of boat on the same type of water or a completely different discipline boat mm. Mm. 
Um, I personally would say a, a different discipline. Um, just just keep things interesting for yourself in terms of progression. Yep. Um, yes, you will probably end up having more of those adaptation moments and yep. having to switch between one or the other. You know, if you're getting from a surf boat into a white water boat, then you're having to, one yep. way you're remembering that suddenly you've only got one edge in the water at a time rather than both. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, those sorts of factors. Um, uh, yeah, but I think I would I would always go with cross discipline as much as you possibly can. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. But then at the same time, I suppose that is great. It's blurred, isn't it? Because you know, you could cross discipline from a an old school or a full slice play boat <coughs> into a creek boat on the same river. Yeah. Potentially at different water levels. Uh, and you're gonna you're gonna gain things, and you're definitely crossing disciplines, um, yeah. despite the fact that they are both white water boats. Yeah, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I'd say I'd say yes, Anne. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's it's because I was I was looking at um, an article on um, the CKS uh, blog, yeah, yeah. and uh, he was talking about this and having a great big quiver of boats and then finding he was hardly ever taking out hard any of the boats he, he said there was even a bird's nest growing in one of the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. growing a bird's nest in one of in, in one of the boats yeah. um and i've kind of found that myself sometimes um i've gone through periods where i've had more boats than than i really should i'm probably i'm probably at that stage at the moment to be honest but um uh we've all been there yeah yeah but i think you know now i've got i have more multi-discipline boats mm. uh, you know i have that surf boat um for example and and no, I, I i nothing compares with that boat once it catches a wave it's yeah. just yes oh my god <laughs> oh my yeah, god totally totally so I was watching the video that you put out once, and you you were in a plastic surfboat. Have you been in a in a composite one yet? No, I haven't. I've I've done I've done a wave ski, which was a fiberglass wave ski. Oh, I remember the, seeing that. The yeah. Speed that... the speed of that is incredible. I like. I would love to get that on a slightly larger wave. Yeah. Um, I haven't had an opportunity. Just this winter has been mental. Um, but yeah. Um, yes. I still, I still haven't been persuaded into a carbon surfboat i think if i do then that will be a dangerous day for my <laughs> yeah yeah that it is it, it is addictive i think i mean i have to admit that i do often find i like the sea better than rivers a lot of the time mm. i it's i this is something about the sea environment that uh, is just nice and especially if you get one of those th those days you know bluebird skies and stuff and yeah between doing you know between catching a wave you can just sit there and just bob about and you've just got this amazing environment that you can sit in yeah it's just totally, it's totally. wonderful yeah no I, I, I think i agree with that yeah in terms yeah of, well i i love the river environment as well <laughs> yeah yeah I, as someone who grew up on the sea there's always a part of me that's that's drawn there i think yeah 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 so just just i mean it's something that's, that sort of popped into my popped into my head when we were talking about sort of boat design and the advancement of the, of the boat design mm. and you know we've seen this kind of advancement in in play boat not in play in in, in creek uh, boat design with this yeah. news that we'll call it the teardrop creek now i like that yeah <laughs> that's gonna creakers. be the one <laughs> hashtag teardrop creeker make it happen uh... so so <laughs> what what do you think's going to happen in terms of freestyle boat design where where can that go uh, teardrop freestyle boats i guess uh, <laughs> um we gosh that's a good question i i wonder whether we're now in a realm where the design is not going to change that much but process and manufacture is the thing that's going to alter um, yeah yeah whether that is moving into 
more sustainable things i think that's probably something that most kayaking companies are thinking about a little bit and and need to be thinking about you know we're unquestionably not a despite the fact that kayakers are i would usually say fairly motivated to be environmentally conscious as a sport the things that we wear and the things that we use are not uh um so i suppose that's probably an element of it that's not really an answer to your question but it's a thought uh but then I suppose also, you know, materials technology on a kind of small scale. I'm not. I'm not an engineer. I'm a linguist. Don't don't ask me questions about this sort of thing. Um, but well, uh, like what I mean, yeah. What uh, what I think is probably the what materials are being used to, you know, add stiffness to your playboats. To you know, like how can you? Well. I, that's the limit of my expertise. <laughs> I mean, I was I was watching. Um, uh, did you did you see the recent clip of uh, Ben Higson winning uh, one of the NFL rounds recently? Oh, no, I missed that. For anyone who's anyone who's watching in America, NFL isn't uh, <laughs> isn't uh, football or NFL whatever. It is. It's not football. It is the finest competition uh, known to man, the Nottingham Freestyle League, um, which yeah is. Probably, I would argue, a better competition than you know, worlds. I um, I, I would definitely agree. I would definitely yeah. agree with that. Um, yeah. Um, so Ben Higson, uh, they they held it in Inlet Gate, and he is doing some absolutely insane combos. Yeah. Like yeah, it's just almost one continuous movement is run. It's just, just yeah, one. Move. And so I was wondering, you know, how how the the the, the freestyle kayak design can kind of interact with that kind of combo movement can mm. that is a is a room for design that actually makes the linking of those combos easier in some way yeah Ooh, yeah yeah perhaps but i suppose that comes down to your your trade-off between volume and sliciness i suppose doesn't yeah. it um yeah which is probably something that over the course of the last 20 years you know we've gone from the full sliciness to the full-on potato you know volume volume and nothing but volume um case in point the 2013 jackson star series uh, <coughs> which is just round <laughs> well yeah but then but if, but if we and, then, about... and then since then it's kind of gone to a sort of combination of both hasn't it of, of kind of tapering and well, it has, and then, playing but then, with where that volume is distributed, and yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting looking at the, the volume distribution of the Rockstar Five and how that differs to like the 2016, which it looks very mm-hmm. similar to. Mm-hmm. And I actually find it easier to put on end than the 2016, even though the 2016 looks like it should be easier. Yeah. But then we can look at boats like the Ozone, mm-hmm. which you know, guys who know what they're doing with freestyle like Bran Orton and whatever that they can pull off pretty much every move they know yes. in an ozone. Yeah, yeah, totally. Even though you look at it and you'd think that shouldn't really be able to do that. Yes. But it can. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I mean the ozone that's another interesting one, isn't it? Because the ozone actually doesn't sit in any of those those cate- you know, it doesn't sit in the kind of full slice category. It doesn't sit in a half slice category. It doesn't sit in playboat category really it's it's somewhere in between yeah but, it's, but, you're, it's, but you're right it's probably more on the playboat end it's just it's a jed that they've just added some slice to yeah or or, or is it a z1 that they've, they've <laughs> yeah, well, yeah exactly it's it's kind of sat in that kind of funny realm on its own but it's interesting that no other company has tried to emulate that or do something that rivals it um yeah because I think it's a cool boat. Yeah. And, well, I don't know. I don't see very many of them around. No, I, I mean, can't I can't imagine that that's because they aren't popular. I think it's probably just that people keep holding them. It does, it does have an unnerving habit, I find, though, with the, the nose behaving a bit like a spoon. Um, if, oh, if, okay. If, yeah. if, it ca- if, it, if it pearls, it, it really loves it. It, lo- it loves to get. I, there, there was there was uh, one one wave I was sitting on, and literally just you know if you hold a, if you hold a spoon up against running water, it gets sucked in like an aircraft wing. 
so the, and it literally just it just got clamped on on the rock that was forming the wave so it was there and, he's, oh, and then and the it just, water just straight into your face yeah yeah just stuck there like uh, so yeah it's it's it, it's yeah but otherwise otherwise i great. i thought it is a great thing but you were, so so you were talking earlier you know about um boats that perhaps are if we're not going to be disparaging what what boats would you say are uh, ones that you have found that didn't really gel with you um i think i had a real like i had a real phase where i lived in an rpm um, yeah and i said earlier i love the rpm i do love the rpm i think if i if i had not sold my rpm i would have probably ended up a happier man uh but um but i don't I, I say that i don't really regret selling it because i found that the rpm being so round hull was one of the factors that was causing stagnation in my cabin um, okay you know not having edges to interact with meant that i like i would get into a boat with edges and i would in, i would just be falling over all yeah. the time um because i just i just neglected that that entire use of my lower core. Um, Did you ever use a red line? I uh, I have sat in a red line once. Um, I tried to use a K1 red line as a C1 uh, on one occasion. That's that's my my experience with a with a uh, a roll mat between my legs as a. C1. Okay. Yeah. Um, I tend to find that. that I, I tend <laughs> to find there's like there's two clubs. There there are red line fans and there are RPM fans. And they don't they don't mix. <laughs> there's no question, I think. I mean it's one of those ones where like you know, it's got a huge cult following, hasn't it? So you, yeah. I almost wore my RPM t shirt this evening. I felt like <laughs> you know. Um but yeah, I think uh I, I anything with a round hull or too round of a of a chine I'm a little suspicious of. Um I think the correlation between paddlers who end up in that kind of stagnation frustration cycle and paddlers who are in a piranha macno for example uh, or like a hefe <laughs> yeah. you know a boat of that nature that is just like a, a round boat or an original dagger nomad you know like you're in a boat like that and then the, the correlation is just quite stark i found Okay, so have you ever tried a slalom boat? I have. I, I did do slalom a little bit at university, um, K1 and C1. Um, and yes, I know they're round. They're round, but they're also flat. Okay. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I. That's surprisingly uh, tricky. Surprisingly tricky. Surprisingly yeah, tricky boats. I agree. To... Yes. Yeah. And I, so, I think that slalom boats have a. They just behave differently anyway, don't they? Um, very very differently they're, they're rounded but they behave like they have an edge that wants to trip wants yeah. to trip, trip you up well, I um, it's because you've got so much of that top edge which is sharp yeah really sharp in the water all the time yeah um, and that tail is so long that you rail know, exactly it, it, your tail that, that rail on the tail is engaging the whole time yeah and yeah if you're not actively yeah. doing something with it it's doing something with you <laughs> yeah i mean for anyone who hasn't paddled a slalom boat it it is like getting in a formula one car so a formula one car most people couldn't drive it because they can't drive it fast enough to even keep the engine going i find a slalom boat is very similar in a car world they want to be driven you know yeah. you they they want to go fast <laughs> yeah. nothing else yeah um if you drift in them then you just you're gonna fall over <laughs> yeah so can i mention a boat that i've absolutely hated um, oh, go on. Yeah. It's an old. It, it, it's an old. It's an old boat. So I don't think You're anyone's going to be offended. Anyone. It's fine. <laughs> um, it, the, the the dagger juice. Oh, the juice. And yeah, I, I, you know, what? I agree with you. Uh... <laughs> we, we, it might be for different reasons. I kind of was okay with the hull, but I couldn't sit in it. I, I wanted to really like it, and when I took it down the river, at one point I was pretty much just taking all the outfitting out of it as I was going down the river. There was nothing I could do to get this boat to be comfortable in any way, shape or form. It completely cut off my blood supply to every part of my body. 
Um, and in the end, I was just like fl flopping around in this boat because I had nothing, no padding or anything in it because I just took it all out. Um, so yeah, that's my hate boat. Of <laughs> I think that's reasonable. Yeah, I mean, looking back on it, I think it's one of those boats that's just a little bit ugly as well, isn't it? Like, yeah, I don't I think just, it knew what it wanted to be. No, really. it didn't know. It, I was about to say exactly that. Like the fact that it's like it, it's a full slice, but the tail is fat, and the yeah. front of it is so squashed that your feet hurt. Like, yeah, something's wrong there. <laughs> There should never yeah, be more volume right. behind you in a boat than there is in front of you. No, it's kind of like the re a reverse slice boat, maybe. Yeah. But is, is that what it? Yeah, it's like the perfect bow pirouette boat and nothing else. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, kind no, of. We but said then we again, to rag on anything. We've really ragged. No, on we we were we weren't. <laughs> but here, okay, so so here, I'm just going on for this. So here's another one. So, is there a boat that you remember loving, but then you've gone back to paddle it now? And you've wondered how on earth you managed to like it at all. Ooh, that's a great question. Um, see, this is where I, I'm betrayed by the fact that I actually haven't paddled that many boats. Um, uh, yes, okay. Um, Go on. So, but this is this is just because I've I've become a I've become a larger human being. Uh, so, I. I loved the Dagger Axiom 8 because I had one. That was my first ever boat. Fantastic design. I absolutely love the Axiom. I still do. Um, I think it's probably one of the best half slice designs still. Uh, and I think probably would hold its own. Granted, less rocker than a lot of the modern designs and all that sort of stuff. You know, it's now 15 years old. But <laughs> I think it paved the way for a lot of the modern designs that we have. Um, However, uh, <laughs> a Dagger Axiom 8 is now a squirt boat for me. <laughs> okay. Like, right. I could not use it as a, as a river runner as I, as I did as a teenager. <laughs> no. 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 Oh, maybe God. not in the same, well, yeah, maybe I not mean, in the same category, but still. It's, uh, yeah. 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 No, m mine is the G-Force. I used to love my G-Force, yeah. and and I've I've been back I've been back in one, and I just oh no. Yeah. That's interesting, <laughs> they, isn't it? Because the G-Force is like the ubiquitous club playboat. Yes. Like in and the, there's, in there's the mid-2000s, there's... everybody had a G-Force. There, there's a there's a guy at one of the clubs locally who I am absolutely convinced will be a name in freestyle. He he has got everything going there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's in a G force at the moment. But I mean, the the guy is absolutely incredible because he he's, he's throwing bow stores and cargoes and stuff in this in this in this G force. But he'd never tried a mo really tried a modern playboat. Yeah. So I got him in one of the Jackson Rock Stars, and he's one of these guys who's tall but light for the boat. Okay, so it's quite, yeah, quite yeah. hard to get the ends down. Yeah. But he got he got in this modern um jackson and immediately his technique was so down that he was just took him a couple of goes and then he was just just on it Incredible. Um, yeah so i think that's kind of a lesson that you can kind of even if you only have access to a retro boat if that's all that you can get hold of yeah you can still do a ton load of stuff in yeah, that boat absolutely yeah very very true very true um yeah you you show that with your neck you haven't sold your neck yeah but you I, is it a necky that you have? No, uh, my Prion Delirious. I Prion, have, a Prion. Yeah, that was one of the two. That and my Gigi together have, have become oh. my Nova. Um, oh. Yeah, I mean, the, but the thing is, the Delirious, I was always too small for it. Um, and I I didn't really realise or come to terms with that until sort of the last year uh, when I was like, oh, man, I'm, like, this is... I rattle around in this, and I always have now I think about it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think that was a long process of realization, which is sad because um, I, yeah, I love the Delirious, it's a fantastic design. Like, I would argue the Delirious is probably one of the all time best designs of a boat, period. Uh, I haven't seen many of them about, so yeah, 
Yeah, Yours well, is one they, of the they, <laughs> they are worth their weight in gold now. Um, yeah. Oh, it's a great design. I can't fault anyone for, for trying to get hold of one. They're great. So. Um, yeah. And as you say, you know, it, if you can if you can get to learn stuff in a boat like that and then you'll get in a modern boat and you will fly. Yeah. So, no question about that. No question. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Simon, I've, awesome. got, I've got one more question. Um, Go on. Shoot. What is what is the place that you are scheming to paddle next? Oh, well, I, d I don't really have any place I'm scheming to paddle next um because scheming or, scheming or dreaming there we go dreaming well I, i've kind of got that coming this year mm -hmm. i'm going back to the socha i love Lovely. i just love slovenia i yeah. absolutely love that and it's been quite a few years since i've been there and uh i've been trying to you know get back there for a while um and yeah this year we're going out there and um yeah gonna have a great time because it's just the most stunning place yeah and incredible. yeah will that be uh, ripper 2 territory then yeah yeah, yeah. very yeah. nice yeah for, 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 for sure um and yeah i mean there's a possibility um of, of going somewhere else later in the year but i haven't quite finalized any plans for that um, just yet but um but yeah i'm, I'm kind of wing things <laughs> quite, nice. quite a bit yeah. at the moment so yeah that's good that's good incredible what about yourself what about yourself though are you uh oh, i think going back the to moment, the states or anything at the moment i've i've had such a long stint of just paddling in the uk um america last year was a bit of an exception that's the first time i've left the uk to go kayaking in five years um but uh yeah i definitely have a bit of an itch to go and do something that's a little bit adventurous and uh expedition -y um i'm yeah. very much pondering returning to madagascar um Ooh. yeah i it just i know how much we left undone out there when i was last there uh and i know how much cool stuff other people have since gone and opened up um and would love to go and explore some of those rivers as well so it's that's definitely an itch um but then there's also part of me that is just craving uh, big, possibly slightly scary white water, but stuff that everyone has everyone knows about and has done before. So I'm not like terrified that you know we're <laughs> going to get lost in the jungle uh, on a first descent. So yeah, I I think Cali next year might be calling potentially. Oh, okay. But, yeah, I quite okay. like that. Like the idea of some granite. Um, We'll see. We'll see. It's, uh, you don't want to go out to go go go, go out to um. Is it was it Papua and uh, try and uh, find Chris Easterbrook's uh, shoes? But, uh... <laughs> Again, jungles. <laughs> <laughs> jungles are uh, yeah. Mind you, give me a, give me a southern hemisphere expedition any day over a northern hemisphere one. People who do northern hemisphere expeditions are just another level of hardcore. <laughs> oh god yeah I, I i'm not expedition material myself i i think um yeah it's 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 one of, one of my my freaky things i think being stuck out in the middle of nowhere and uh, yeah that's fair I yeah think that, yeah i there's a it's another thing that's a little bit like the the surfing i think there's a certain level of addiction <laughs> um of that kind of yeah desire to be at the edge of yourself i suppose yeah is yeah, yeah. um maybe that's not healthy i don't know <laughs> <laughs> oh dear well on that note thank you so so much simon this has been really great hopefully that has brought some some sanity uh, and we we only ragged on two boats so i think we get away with that <laughs> um yeah if you've enjoyed watching this and you'd love to see some more interviewee style content then please do let me know in the comments down below if you're seeing this for the first time and you've enjoyed it then and you've and you've stayed around this far then thank you very much hopefully some people maybe have had this on in the background while they've been doing other things just listening that would be that would be awesome if you've done that um but if you're here for the first time then please do consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so that you are informed when new videos come on out uh, 
hit that like button and uh, yeah let us know where in the world you are listening or watching from um and yeah look forward to seeing you in the next one thank you so much simon see you in the next one everybody